Hello everybody and thank you for taking the time to watch our symposium video for our senior design project. We are the Variable Adjusting Suspension and Axle Design Group, or VACID for short. So let's take a brief look at everything that we've accomplished over the past 32 weeks. My name is Jason Clark and I was the project manager for the VACID Group. Let me discuss briefly the uh, applications of our design and why we chose to do what we did. We wanted to create a design capable over many different types of terrains. Possible applications for this include search and rescue missions after a natural disaster, finding IEDs in a war zone, and also possible use on other planets. To do this, we wanted to be able to force down the wheels to gain more traction. We achieved this with two four bar mechanisms in the front and two three bar mechanisms in the rear mounted with the rack and pinion setup to get the desired linear motion. Hello, my name is Brendan Sumter. I handle the 3D model and the simulation for the project. So I'm going to break down all the parts to our rover for everyone to get a better understanding. To start off, these are the wheels. Then we move to the two front arms that are attached to the bottom of the box. Then we got the shock absorbers that help with the impact of rocks and sticks. Next, there's the rack and pinion combination. This allows the suspension to move up and down as we please. They are being held by rack holdings which allow it to slide up and down. These are controlled by small 12 volt DC motors that you see here. Then you got bigger 12 volt DC motors here that are the drive motors, which makes the rover move forward and backwards. All this is powered by two 12 volt batteries that are held by 3D printed holding cases. Lastly, between them is the computer holding cases and this cover. Hello, my name is Joshua Warren and I handle the electrical and programmable aspects of the project. Let's take a closer look at the electrical system. First, the controller uses an Arduino, which we program to take input from the two joysticks, which sends to the Arduinos in the package using radio frequency. This side of the system functions as the transmitter. The antenna is what we use to have the Arduinos talk to each other. The Arduinos receive an input from the controller via the receiver and tells the motors to go forward or backwards for both the drive and suspension. The package consists of two dual channel motor drivers which control the motors. The Arduino receives direction and speed data from the controller which tells the motors how fast to turn in what direction. So let's look at some of our testing footage montage. This first video shows a standstill test of the rover flexing its suspension. The suspension has a measured range with digital calipers at 3.97 inches. Now we'll look at how we control the rover. It starts with the right hand controls for the suspension motors and then switches to the left hand controls for the driver motors. Next, we're going to see the rover travel over dirt and then grass. As you can see, the rover rockets down the dirt very easily and then it slows down a little bit when traveling through the grass but still makes it through successfully, only stopping when we got far away from the camera. Now we have some footage of the rover starting on gravel. We start with the pinion gears up so the rear wheels get pushed down. Then it begins to get some traction. And then it rides off into the sunset. As you guys can see, the rover does not perform in sand. The tires just kick up sand due to the lack of tread on the tires. Even in this video, you can see the rover got a moving start in the sand and the centipede tread on the tires still doesn't want to get traction. Now we move into our max speed test. We ended up doing six different passes. The average max speed was 9.33 miles per hour. Our top max speed was 13 miles per hour and it happened on this pass. Testing got a little out of control and we crashed the rover, but the structure of the design held up just fine. Lastly, here's a final look at the rover flexing and suspension. All this with the beautiful Whitehurst beach in the background. This concludes our testing footage. We were presented with lots of additional challenges being mostly virtual during this pandemic. But we want to thank everybody that helped us get this project done. We want to reserve a special thanks to our faculty advisor, Dr. Chin. We hope you enjoyed watching our presentation and everything that we've accomplished during the past 32 weeks.